Pretty amazing, right? That is the collection of self-portraits that you drew last week. All of you out there who are, it's just so nice to see you. It's so nice to see how you interpreted yourselves. And um, yes, as, as Renny Marie Martinez says, each of you drew yourself in a way that expressed who you are as well. So um, the likenesses were probably great. I know some of you. I know what some of you look like. But I love that there was also we had a little girl um, who also contributed her self-portrait. And apparently she had a little portrait party with some of her friends. So it was really nice. Really nice to see so many different uh, ways that we are and see ourselves. So thanks for doing that. I hope it inspired you to keep going. I've been inspired myself and I've been continuing to draw selfies sometimes several a day of late. This has been an interesting week for me. My wife went on vacation with a bunch of her friends to Mexico. So I'm here, me and Twiglet, um, here in, uh, I don't know, in seclusion, living the single life. Well, not really. There's the two of us. Um, but yeah, so that has been interesting. And I've had more time to do art, I guess, because I don't have to have conversations or play games or watch TV or eat nice dinners or all the other benefits of marriage. So I can sit around drawing, which is something that I've been doing. And uh, thinking about Draw With Me and what we can do. To, to do something um, fun this week, which I hope we will do. What else? Um, oh, yes, part of my health kick. It's not really a health kick, but I'm drinking green juice because I don't know why. <laughs> it smell like, you know, trying to be under-caffeinated for a change. So if you notice me being mellow and uh, less agitated and uh, animated as, than usual that's because well actually it's because i'm really excited to see you so forget all that i will be animated uh chris asked if that's a can of raviolis it would be except i don't know where the can opener is so yeah just scratching the outside of it but yeah no, I, I agree with with john solitude is very nice in moderation JJ will be back on Friday, so I will return to the hubbub of marital bliss. But no, it is different. It is different. It is, it is a different pace when you're on your own, particularly in these days where, you know, we're still like one foot in, one foot out of um, not quarantine exactly, but just not being super eager to be outside with people. Although I will say, yesterday I went and got my hair cut. I've been cutting my own hair for like a year and a half, which has been, you know, a mixed blessing. But I went to this barber shop, and then a couple doors down was uh, this bookstore that I passed a few times. It has a really ugly sign; looks really industrial. And I figured it's like there's a certain kind of bookstore that sells like remaindered books. It's not a secondhand bookstore; it sells remaindered books, books that nobody even wanted to buy in the first place. And I thought that that's what this bookstore was. But I thought, well, I've got a couple minutes. Let me just go in and look. Oh my gosh, it was unbelievable. Enormous with so many incredible books. A huge section on cartooning, a section, massive section on art and drawing. I'm going to be spending a lot of time there. I was only able to spend a, a brief amount of time and buy a couple of mini presents for others. So, But I definitely will be planning to plunge in before. Um, so yes, it's true. It was, a seren it was serendipitous and... Um, you know, that's part of the thing about being in a new city. You don't really know what's what, and you kind of stumble onto things, and they often turn to be really cool. So it was really nice, and it's true. Never judge a book or a bookstore by its cover. So that's all true. Um, okay, what else do I want to talk about today? Today, um, oh, one thing I forgot last week. I mentioned, I realized afterwards, somebody wrote to me and said, didn't you say you were going to give away a free sketchbook? This watercolor book from Honolulu, and I, I had said I would, and I didn't, because I forgot. Because I last week there was just a bunch of stuff going on. So, I want to give you this this sketchbook, or one of you. So, just write to me. I'll give you my email address in a second. Danny Gregory at sketchbookschool.com. 
just write to me and say, I want that sketchbook. I'm going to start it off for you. I'll do a drawing or write something or do something that breaks the imposing, intimidating whiteness of blank pages. And uh, that way you can say, all right, it's already been broken in. I can easily draw in it. So that's that. Um, so yes, so that's all. I'm not enabling. It's free. I'll give it to you. Just write to me and tell me you want it. And then I'll pick somebody and give it to them. Sorry, I'm still sweating from my mad dash with Twiglet to the green juice store. So if you see me perspiring heavily, it's not because I'm under indictment. It's because it's, it's, it's almost August and it's crazy hot here. So, okay. Here's one thing I did want to talk about beforehand. And this is something I haven't talked about really in a long time, but it's something that really matters to me a lot. And um, it's something that, I don't know, I feel like I haven't done a very good job of explaining to you what it is. And it's this. Whoops, it's not that. <laughs> what is it? What I want to tell you about is this, Spark. Now, you might say to yourself, hasn't this guy talked about this already a while ago? Possibly. But I want to talk about it in different terms than you may know about. Because Spark is this thing that we started, oh my gosh, we've been working on it for a couple of years now, but we launched it at the end of last year. And since it has grown into this amazing, overwhelmingly interesting phenomenon that I had no idea it would turn into. Basically what it is, is every day we do events like Draw With Me. Draw With Me is kind of a mini taste, a crude facsimile of what a Spark event is like. And basically we bring on artists and they lead you through different kinds of creative exercises and experiences. Sometimes they're really in depth and they then there it's like a real workshop you know that you would on the scale of the kinds of workshops that we do every month and sometimes they are more casual sometimes they are artists studio visits there are all kinds of things let me just show you in fact this is the um this is this week's event this is one week in spark just so you can see okay so draw with me isn't technically a spark event but we put it there anyway then i have a thing called box of chocolates which is uh, something I'm going to do this afternoon. It's called Box of Chocolates because you never know what you're going to get. It's always something different that I do. Bring in some inspiration, talk about something interesting. Night Owls is an event we have almost every night at 7 p.m. These are all Pacific times, so um, they vary. They don't vary. The time zone remains the same. But, of course, wherever you will be, the time will be different. Art Break is um, a basically a mini art lesson. Nature Journaling sketch and stretch which is basically combining yoga and drawing really helpful for kind of dealing with whatever body issues you can develop as you make a lot of art more night owls draw with us which is kind of an open session where we all get together and draw uh, art before breakfast is a thing that i'm now taking over that's the very first thing we do on monday morning where we do uh, an, uh, basically an assignment we work together on that another art break Kosha comes in on Tuesdays for Draw Tip Tuesday. She does that live. Um, Janice's studio is an opportunity to, to hang out with, with Janice, who is an incredible uh, watercolorist and a great teacher. She also runs a thing called Watercolor Wednesday. Uh, we have Drawing with Faith. We have uh, next week's uh, Felix Scheinberg is going to drop by. He's going to show us around his studio. We're going to talk to him about his work. That's the thing is like you get to talk to the teachers. It's not like this where you can, yeah, you can type in a couple of comments. These are on Zoom. So you can literally be in the room with Felix Scheinberger. Or not literally, but virtually. And you can ask him anything. If he says something, you can question him. If similarly in any of these workshops, you're not a passive participant. You get to see what other people are doing. They share their work. You get to talk to them if you want to and chat. It's a really, I mean, I've just never had that kind of engagement with people when you're actually working. It's really very different. Uh, drawing fundamentals, we go over basics of drawing, um, which we could all use. Improving imagination, where we work on creative exercises, illustration nation. So that's just one week. That's one week at Spark. So that it's, there's just an awful lot of things going on. So there's that. Then, of course, 
we do these monthly workshops and if you're a member of spark you get to come to the monthly workshop for free and then we bring back the artist a week later and we talk about the workshop again again in a small group so a lot of these events have you know they'll have anywhere from five to fifty people in them depending um, but it's really an opportunity i think a lot of y'all out there are um what level of spark do you have to be there's basically one level of spark now there's one level of spark um there's two there's danny circle which is personal coaching for me but the basic level of spark includes all of this stuff and, and of course you also get all of our library of content all of our library of courses and i think a lot of people have said and i want the library of courses and that's what they thought spark was but i think anybody who's in spark will tell you and i'm going to ask anybody who's in the events there um if you're in spark the library is nice and we use it to kind of reinforce stuff because we'll bring in a teacher and we'll show their videos or we do art breaks where we'll play a video from the library but and it's of course you're always welcome to take the courses on your own and to join with other people who are taking the course but that's not the main thing the main thing i think is these as you can see two or three hours a day if you want to go to all of them which is exhausting so um so yes so that's all what spark is corinne corinne is a fan of spark who else out there is a spark person let me just see um yeah i don't see many people oh, i see melissa here mitzi mitzi's a fan and uh she says so much more than art classes it's true i mean you're getting to see the same people on a regular basis which is also cool kind of like what we do here so yes lots of different things um just lots of fans out there so um thank you all for putting your hands up and and uh speaking out for it and um yes even brand new people uh, people who are brand new to art are doing it so it's it's really kind of what the whole purpose of sketchbook school was from the beginning in some ways developing a community of people who learn to make art together reinforce each other give each other support uh comments help and also learn together so um do you just get to it from events on schoolyard you do if you um yes there's a special group in in the schoolyard just for spark people and that's where all the lists are you just click on it and boom you're in so it's very simple uh, martis was in watercolor watercolor wednesday i mean it's now expanded to 90 minutes so you get a 90 minute watercolor lesson every week from a really accomplished watercolorist i mean 90 minutes a week every week that's pretty insane right um so yeah but here's what i would say to you if this piques your interest at all i have a few seats tickets uh special memberships that i can give out to a select number of people if you write to me and you say this sounds interesting to me i want to know more about it if you're curious about spark and you want to i'll i'll hop on a call with you and i'll explain more about it if you'd like or i'll bring on one of the other members to explain to you what they get out of it so write to me danny gregory at sketchbookschool.com say i'm interested in spark i want to know more about it and i'll give you a little bit of an offer to sweeten the deal to so you can try it out for for a couple months and see whether it's for you i think it will be i think everybody who joins it gets an enormous amount out of it so try it try it as biz says drink the kool-aid um oh john muir laws it's true i just got um a copy of john muir Ugh. uh the laws guide to nature drawing and journaling so john muir laws kind of the the one of the kings of uh, nature journaling is going to be joining us kosha as i said uh jane lafazio does a regular gig prashant will be back soon to do stuff um we, and we have every month we have a guest like felix coming in uh france van stone's going to be joining us so these people who you know from sketchbook school courses are now a regular you can just hang out with them you can talk to them directly you can show them what you've done i mean that's that's pretty amazing and i have to say as corinne points out no more excuses for not drawing you will draw so much you will learn so much you'll be so productive it will really fit your, fit into your um your schedule and you will do lots of different things so all right good i hope this doesn't feel like a shield but honestly i i love spark so much and it kind of kills me when i think there's a lot of people out there who have no idea how cool this thing is it's so it's so interesting that you have to kind of experience it and we've struggled to like really 
like, how do I write an email to you about this? So as you saw, there's an awful lot of things going on and it's just, it's, it's pretty unique. It's pretty special. It's pretty different. And uh, yeah, so it's good. So Sang uh, Lee, nice to see you again, my friend in Korea. It's great to see you. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you're doing well. So um, yes, all right. Oh, some complaining. Yeah, well, there's going to be draw with me. Advertising is a standard part of my shtick, as you know. So uh, sorry to waste your time. All right. Thanks, MK. You've made me feel great, and I'm ready to move on. Let us do a drawing. I'm thinking this week that I would like to draw. Um, what would I like to draw? I'd like to draw not my Gmails. I want to draw my dog. That's what I was thinking. Let's draw. Let's draw our animals. Draw mine if you'd like, or draw your own. Um, and uh, we'll see. All right. No more advertising. MK, whoever you are. Nice to see you. Nice to hear from you. Let's do some drawing. Um, this is Twiggy. Twiggy is my pug. She is nine, nine months old now. Francesca wants to draw her prairie dog. A prairie dog? You own a prairie dog? Co cohabit with one? Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. Um, I'm going to be drawing on my iPad. I haven't been doing it that much recently, but I do love drawing on my iPad. And uh, I'm going to be drawing on this sort of textured paper, which is kind of cool, and I enjoy doing it. So um, you can draw on whatever you'd like, with whatever you'd like, and we will see where we get. But let's think about... So Twiggy is sort of interesting to draw. She, she has this... She is the sweetest, cheeriest dog, but she does have this sort of naturally resting... Uh, so disgruntled face, but that's not at all her nature. She was a bit disgruntled. This picture was taken just before this. I took this a couple weeks ago because now she just had surgery. She got spayed and she, um, she got spayed, uh, a week ago, Monday, she's doing very well, barely had to wear the cone of shame, but she is this I keep picking the wrong pen but she is doing well she also had surgery on her nose you know as you can see pugs have very tiny noses and as the vet said to us you know they don't what they basically do is they've taken her whole face nature has or history has or the breeding world has took her whole face and shoved it in so all the stuff that a normal dog or a non-pug dog or non... I forget what hydrocef... I forget that they're called hydrocephalic... <laughs> I don't know what it is. Dogs with mushed in faces have... They've taken all that stuff and mushed it in. So it's all kind of shoved into this little tiny area in her face. So, they, um, so she had some surgery to just open that up. And so she'll be able to breathe much more easily, which is important when, uh, when it's really hot and you want, and you love to run and play as she does. So, you know what? I'm not happy with where I'm going with this. I'm, I'm not in the zone and I need to get in the zone. So let me just clear this. And I want to start again. Um, So I'm going to go much bigger and looser. Yeah, that feels more right. Because <clears throat> I want to capture her personality, not just draw her as if she was an object. She's not an object. She is my only companion right now, so I have to treat her well. Not treat her like I was drawing a shoe. Uh, 
I've drawn her lots of times since she joined our family um, last fall, but I can't say I've, t I've really captured what is what is so great about her. She does. She, she always looks kind of irritated, and and uh, she just isn't. So. Capturing a personality when her f the design of her face doesn't match her personality is kind of part of the interesting thing about it. Yeah, hey, see again, she's looking sort of glum. It's it's a weird thing with doing portraits, isn't it? That you. Um, You're trying to capture a likeness, but you're also trying to capture the inner, inner cre creature. Can I do it? She does get a bit, mean, a bit mad at me these days because if it was up to her, all I would do would be play tug of war all the time. That's all we would do. Just grab toys and yank them around. Now she's just becoming abstracted. Let's see if I can bring it back from the brink. Hmm, that was interesting. Interesting thing that just happened. That can often happen when you're doing um, highlights, is that you can you can just animate eyes with just the slightest little touch. It's kind of cool. Um, yeah, where, where am I here? That's not right. It's not right either. <clears throat> here we go. Bit of opacity. I just want to kind of add a bit of dimension to her nose there. She's looking cuter, don't you think? A bit cuter? Cute. Kind of an optimal thing. 
What about your animals? What kind of personalities do they have? And is it possible to capture them? Do you have to show them doing something, maybe, to see it? I mean, we don't really do that with portraits of people. Feel like, oh, we need to show them being mischievous. But animals, because their faces are not necessarily that expressive, right? They don't change the way ours do, most of them. It's a bit, it's a different kind of job to capture personality in a creature. Because we're looking for human, humanoid expressions, and uh, they don't necessarily have those. They express themselves with their whole bodies. So then maybe you do need to show the whole body. I mean, for instance, Twiggy has an incredibly expressive thing that she does, which we call U-boating. <laughs> Because she shapes her body into a U, she pulls her tail. She's like her body is sort of like this, with her tail and her head kind of like a little croissant, and she um, wriggles and wiggles and waggles her tail, and um, that's like when she's super excited and also kind of almost out of control, like doesn't really know how to fully express the incredible excitement inside of her over this thing. And her face, if you look at her face, it kind of might look sort of like this. There might be a little bit of change in the wrinkles, but she's really excited, and yet, how, how would one know? My favorite dog breed? Well, right now, it's the pug, you know? I used to own dachshunds, and uh, I love those. But I have to say, neither was my particular sort of breed of choice. In both cases, somebody else selected the dog. But I love all dogs, and the dogs that I've kind of gone out and bought on my own were all m what they call mixed breeds, what I call mutts or mongrels. I don't think they're mixed breeds because I don't think they're really the, the mixture of different breeds. They're really more just kind of plain old dogs that never came anywhere near a breeder. So they're just, uh, you know, She's actually looking pretty cute here. So that's, I would say, my favorite dog. Um, you know, this happens every time I draw dogs. I don't know if you remember, like, uh, six months ago or so, I drew dogs, and then there were a lot of cat people who were like, why don't you draw dogs? Cats, too. So we drew cats. Not really my thing. Um, I haven't, don't really own cats, but... Um, Janice says, Corgi's smile. Yes, corgis are, very, corgis are just so friendly. They're clown dogs. In some ways, pugs are too. But, uh, yeah. So, yes. Spaniels. Yeah, spaniels have a similar thing, right? They have the long, the floppy ears. Twiggy has at least ears that will stand up like this, and that makes it, um, makes it look a bit more brass, brachycephalic. Say that ten times first. Brachycephalic, that's what it is. A, a short muzzled dog, yes. With a face shoved in. I'm using Procreate. And uh, the brush I'm using is sort of a brush that I've customized, but it's called Rad Round 2. And it is a very, it is a, it is basically a, f a brush that is very responsive, you see? See how, how responsive it is when I push? But it has sharp edges. Which I like. I like uh, this is the this is the pen I use the most probably, and I do a lot of things with it. And so if I want to get soft edges on this pen, um, I do. I use layers, and I and I change the different layers so that I get softness to it, um, as opposed to I I can't stand when you, when I see somebody using let's say um, I mean I'll see this a lot where people are using like really soft edged pens like this. No, that actually isn't a bad pen. Um, you'll see people doing what I think is like the worst of um, of digital art where you're really softening your pen. I can't even do it badly. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to do a bad version of this. I'm not succeeding. But there's this sort of softness that happens. Like for instance, if you took take the airbrush, 
right? That's, that is something that is, has to be really judiciously used, but, um, but I'll show you how I use it. I'm not sure why this is turning into a Procreate demo, but I will show you anyway. So what I'll do is I'll take something like black and, um, and I'll take the airbrush and I'll dial it back and then I'll do something like this which at first is like, oh my God, that's horrible. What have you done there? But like, let's say I just want to add a bit of shading to the side. Then I'll turn that into a clipping mask and I'll make it into um, luminosity. Maybe I won't make it into a clipping mask. I'll make it, I won't make it into a clipping mask. I'll just make it into luminosity and then I'll dial it back. So what you're getting is, and then I can go in and I can clean it up if I want to and I can give it a hard edge so I'm just getting a little subtle bit of shading. It's subtle, and I can dial it back if I want to. But luminosity means that it has no color, it's just tone. And then I go in and, I, and I'll clean it up. Like, so for instance, this eye, I don't want to have any shading on that. And uh, so I'll go in and erase that part of it. Maybe I'll do the same here. Are you digging it? I sound like that, that character from uh, Sugar Smacks. Do you dig it? I didn't mean that at all. I just meant, do you, do you understand what I'm doing? Good Lord, what's happened to me today? I think it's because I've been in this house alone for too long. So, if you see my wife, tell her that I'm slowly losing my mind here. Drinking green juice. Doing strange things. All right, well, that's Twiggy. I mean, that actually... that looks like her and kind of captures her personality. So I can uh, I can get rid of my reference picture if I want now. And um, I could also, oops, I can also take this and group it and then I can make it just a bit bigger on the page. Give her a bit more importance. She's an important creature. She deserves some importance on the page. There you have it, Twiggy. All right. Let me get rid of the offending Spark logo. I have some green juice. I'm still sweating. Anyway. So I'm using Procreate. Oh, that's an old question. Um, that's a great point, Jen. I'd like to hear the sound, the sound of scritchy, scratchy pencil, the sound of a dip pen, the sound of a marker, the sound of watercolor. What does watercolor sound like? One hand clapping. I'm sorry, you want to see Twiggy again? Um, how can I give you Twiggy? All right, I'll put Twiggy up here briefly while I continue talking. She can't be that big, though. She can't overshadow me with her beauty. Never thought that I would lo love a pug. It's sort of an acquired taste, you know? But I do. So there you have it. That's a pug. Watercolor sounds like heaven. <laughs> Maybe dip pens sound like hell. She is bigger. She is a lot bigger. She when we got her, she was like this size. She weighs about I don't know seventeen pounds now. Beefy, solid, not fat though. Solid, all muscle. Believe me, I have the scars to, to prove it. Hey, guys. Um, let me just wrap this up, and then we can carry on. 
maybe I'll just keep drawing, but let me just wrap up this obligatory part of it. If you have, um, if you have draw, done a drawing of Twiggy or of your pet that you'd like to share so that I can add it to our collection, please, please put it on social media, tag it with uh, SBS Draw With Me, and um, I'd be delighted to share it next time. I also want to ask you to subscribe to this channel and to like it. I know that sounds kind of groveling, but the fact is YouTube likes things that people subscribe to and likes things that people like. And so then they will go and tell other people about Sketchbook School, and then we'll have more people come to draw with me. We'll have more people drawing. The world will become a nicer, gentler place the, and more beautiful and filled with art all because you subscribe to this channel. How do you do that, you're saying? How do I subscribe to this channel? Here. You just go to that subscribe button. And if you click the little bell there, when you click that bell, that means that anytime I make a new video, including this draw with me, you'll be notified. And I'm making these video essays about once a week um, that I'm putting out there too. So you'll, you'll get invited to see those too. So that's if you do that. And uh, what else do I have to tell you? Is that more or less it? Possibly. Oh, um, I write an essay every week. And you can subscribe and I'll send it to you. It's called dannysessays.com. That's not what it's called, but that's where you can sign up for it. And I, I've, I've been early this week and I've actually written the one that I'm going to be sending out tomorrow. And you'll get it tomorrow if you sign up today. That's about it. And finally, um, I just want to remind you again about if you would like to know more about Spark, and I know at least one of you doesn't, but if the rest of you would like to know a bit more about Spark, contact me, Danny Gregory at sketchbookschool.com and just say, I want to know more about it. I'd like a little sweet deal that you're given to new people who want to try it out. Just write to me. I'll talk to you about that. And if you want to hop on a call with me or hop on a call with one of um, the other folks here at Sketchbook School, we can tell you more about it. So those are my things. And uh, that's about it. Meanwhile, I'm going to go back and work on this a bit more. You're welcome to keep... Well, we need the picture back, don't we? I know. That's what you were complaining about before, but I've lost it now, haven't I? There it is. There she is in all her glory. She looks a little squidgier and pudgier in the photo than, than perhaps I made her. So maybe I need to add some more pudge and squidge. Why not? No, that's neither pudge nor squidge. Well, I hope that you continue to work on your pet critter, petter, critter, prairie dog, uh, mandrill, uh, uh, zebra, whatever the kind of pet you have, Zelina drew me. All right, I'll, I guess I'm Zelina's animal of choice. That's fine. <laughs> um, thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing that. Please do do it. Patty, I'm sorry you're late. This event is being recorded, and you're welcome to watch the recording anytime you'd like. Um, and uh, all right. Really, Monica? Maybe that's maybe that explains why uh, Zelina was inspired to draw me. You know, they say people become p people and their dogs start to look alike. Maybe that's what's going on here. <laughs> I don't think my wife looks like her though. So, and it's really her dog more than it is mine. So. I don't know what to say. Well, um, it's been fun. Some of you who are, I will see this afternoon at Box of Chocolates. I look forward to that. And I look forward to seeing you and your work, your, your critter, um, sometime over the next week. And seeing me here again next Thursday for another scintillating uh advertising free 
edition of the exciting adventure that is Draw With Me. You know, I was watching, um, was I reading somewhere? I was reading somewhere where they were talking about internet voice. Have you heard this phenomenon? <clears throat> and it's not vocal fry and those kinds of things, but it's the fact that people on the internet, picking on YouTube, tend to have a certain kind of delivery. They deliver, I don't know what it is. It's like somebody was equating it to like used car salesman commercials. There's a certain kind of projection. And, uh, you know, I like to think that I just mumble in the same way that I always do. And I hope that um, I remain that way. But you never know. Maybe I do tend to. And now, another commercial announcement from Sketchbook School. Is that what I'm doing? Kosha, nice to see you too. And uh, Motor Week TV, yeah, I think. But it's also just like a lot, just a lot of vloggers and people who do these shows. They tend to do that, yeah. They tend to do that stuff. And uh, Wilma, I'm sorry to remind you of Sally. I was thinking about my guys too, Joe and Tim. Remember Joe and Tim? Yes. I buried Joe and Tim's ashes under a tree in Washington Square Park. And when I went back to visit it three or four weeks ago, the tree was gone. You think you can count on a tree in a park to be a suitable memorial, but it was gone. But I know where it was and I know where they are. So, <sighs> Kosha. Kosha, do you have an internet voice? I don't think you do either. It's, it's weird when you do a lot of this stuff and you're like, hey, I'm talking to, I'm sitting by myself in a room talking to people who I think are out there and we're doing weird things. So anyway, um, thank you all for being here, for listening to my voice and for drawing my dog. Things I didn't expect to happen in my life, but they have. So um, let's, let's get together next week. Please, let's do some more drawing. And uh, I'm not sure. I have a plan for next week vaguely, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. I will eventually. All right. Bye, guys. Bye, Kosha. Bye, everybody else. It's been fun. <laughs>